bike and run in the corner sun. We're gonna swim, bike and run in the corner sun. Cause it's perfect with Bob. Thank you, Poncho Man. Welcome, everybody. Breakfast with Bob from Conehead Huggles on the Rocks. My name is Bob Babbitt, brought to you by Master Spas as Fuels, Right Fuel, Right Time, Hoka, Fly Human Fly, Deborah Wetsuits, Quintana Root, and of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation. Our next guest, Matthew Marquardt, who was here as an age grouper two years ago. First time here as a pro, though, right? Correct, yep. How was the experience as an age grouper? Uh, it, was a, it was a really incredible experience. I had a lot going on outside of triathlon, so the race was much harder, I think, than it should have been. So I'm <laughs> I'm looking forward to having those things kind of not in the way this time and just kind of letting it rip and, and enjoying it the most that I can. And, you know, it'll be a hard day no matter what. But And you won your age group that year. I still won my age group, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you had a huge exam right before you got on the plane. Exactly, yeah. So leading up to that, I, got, I had a huge exam right before I came out here. And um, then when I got here... Uh, had some major bike issues and then also uh, ended up getting an infection and needing antibiotics just a couple of days before oh the race. Hey, so, you still won your day. <laughs> yeah. So. And so was that one of the things that they said, maybe I could be a pro with this? Yeah. No, I mean, when, when I started 2022, um, the goal that year had always been to like go and win Kona and then hopefully convert to pro after that. And I had had a couple of really good successes leading up to that point. And, and so it was looking like a pro being a pro was already in the in the works yes and then winning my age group kind of by I, well i won the day by over f 15 minutes i think and so <laughs> that was like i think just another you know check mark that like okay it was time to move on up <laughs> uh, time to move up uh, absolutely and one of the races was ironman texas that was a big battle right that was ironman yeah. texas 2023 and i mean 48 59 swim for Four, was it 408 12 bike and 24308 uh run 745 11 that's pretty damn impressive was that was texas your first iron man as a pro texas was my first <laughs> iron man as a pro yeah you so 745 yeah so it was uh, quite the way to come out <laughs> and wasn't that the one where there's a big battle you and rudy and who was the th there was another guy in there too yeah so it was um rudy uh robert wilco we asked yeah and Bilko then me Vicky. And um, they had about three minutes on me coming off the bike. And yes. I was able to claw back almost all of those three minutes in the last half of the run. Yes. Um, so it, it made for, I think I was eight seconds behind Robert and 21 seconds behind Rudy. So at the finish. At the finish, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often in Ironman. No, it doesn't. Right? It doesn't. It was as close, I think, to a, to a photo finish as you get in this sport. So as you're making your way through the field, I'm sure there was parts where you, you didn't see them. Then all of a sudden, there they are. Yeah. And you're thinking... I'm gonna win this thing. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was pretty cool. Like I, I felt really good on that run and um, was really just kind of doing my own thing. And then near, I, I guess maybe the halfway or about a third way to yeah. go, it became apparent that they were starting to fade. And that if I just kind of found that extra gear, that that maybe I could pull it in. And almost got the job done, but not quite. <laughs> but getting on a podium, your first pro yeah. Ironman is pretty damn cool. Was was very cool, especially it was really my only goal in that race was to qualify for Nice. And so all I needed to be was like sixth or something like that. So to be podium was great. That's cool. And then at Nice, you got 11th. Yep. So just like, how have you balanced? Because it's not like you're going to, you're an undergrad. Yeah. You're freaking, you're, how far along are you in your, in your medical pursuit? I'm about halfway through medical school so far. Okay. Um, and uh, I've taken a little bit longer path. I did the first two years, um, which included my first year as a pro, just right. normal right. med school. And then since about last year, midway through last year, I've been focused more on research, yes. um, which has just given me some more flexibility to train, but still, still same number of hours, but just um, What more type of hours? I mean, I pretty much wake up. I'm pretty much working from six to six every day. Every day? Yeah. Working and that... And working, which includes some training. Okay. Um, and, the, and at medical school, they've been okay about that? They have been, yeah. Because I think overall, medicine has a pretty good understanding of, like, as long as you get the work done, that's what matters. And right. So, um, so, yeah. I love that. And what was your takeaway going to your, you know, going to the world championship as a pro and when you go to Nice. Yeah, um, we learned a ton on that race. I mean, I think like one of the most important things is the race is never over until it's over. Right. So 
Um, I definitely overdid the bike a little bit on that race and came off, I think, like 19th or so on the bike and then was able to run way, my way up to 11th um, right. just by staying in it. And so I think that was a big part. And then we learned some really important parts about my training in terms of kind of durability and, and kind of mixing up between what I do on the trainer and what I do on the road and right. and some little things like that. So um, the most important thing about every race for us is to make sure that we learn something and we can adapt something for the next one. So, and then this year, you know, third at Ironman Texas, again, it's again sub eight, 749.10, third at Mont Tremblant, and then get second at Placid. Yep. Another a, a 246 marathon, another sub, a sub eight, 757. What do you take away from your prep with your racing prep leading into this? Yeah, so um, I think one of the big things that we've really focused on this time is the mental side of it. And just, oh, interesting. Um, with, I, I, some people could probably define me as an alcohol, a workaholic, not an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wishful but, thinking. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I definitely work a lot, and I, I've been kind of known to probably do a little bit too much academic work and a little too much research leading into the race and kind of my mental battery has not necessarily always been fully charged. Right. And so really going into this race, we've really focused on, you know, slowing that down, focusing on like just really recuperating and making sure that I'm as energized as I can be because everyone knows that that run is going to be hard. And so I'm going to need every little bit of kind of mental fortitude and right. concentration that I have to have the best day possible. So through high school and college, were you a runner or a swimmer? Both? So I was predominantly a swimmer. Okay. Um, I swam at Princeton University, and um, but I, I did kind of do every sport under the sun um, through high school. So I okay. did soccer, lacrosse. I did some track and cross country, but swimming was really where I was elite at. And yes. so that's what took me to college. And it wasn't until pretty much I graduated college that I transitioned into triathlon. What was your stroke in swimming? I was backstroke and butterfly. Backstroke and butterfly. Okay, yep. so 200 fly 400 im not quite so it was like 200 backstroke 100 backstroke and 200 fly so, okay yeah Those are, but in terms of w which what do you think is is tougher oh, oh. 200 fly 400 im oh good question i mean <laughs> i think 400 im because i'm really really terrible at breaststroke really yeah <laughs> i'm glad there's somebody else out there my legs just can't work like that yeah that's a weird that's a weird kick yeah yeah i've never really been able to get it and so i don't know Many years ago, I decided the IM was not in my, my cards, and so, you know, we just left it at that. 200 fly. <laughs> yeah, 200 fly. Which is brutal. Yep. Yeah. So, becoming, a lot of people start, Mark Allen, Dave Scott had the swim background, mm -hmm. and then became triathletes. And one of the issues that I know Mark specifically had is swimmers, you can do high volume and high intensity pretty much every day. Yeah. And they would try to transfer that to running, and then they'd get injured. Yep. Did you have that issue? Um, thankfully, no. Um, I, I credit a lot of that to my coach. I think he's done a really phenomenal job of balancing my load, especially with medical school, because yes. that's not an easy, you know, kind of thing to figure out. Um, and he's done a really phenomenal job. And um, I also would like to think that I have pretty good body awareness. And yes. so, like this spring, I did kind of have a little running injury. I got a little stress reaction in my mm. left leg, but. I had kind of the wherewithal and awareness to kind of stop and get it checked out before it got too bad. And I mean, I think that really saved my season because it meant that in May, I only had about to take about four weeks off instead right. of eight or 10. Yeah. Well, and again, you've, you've, you haven't raced a lot this year, but every race has been podium. Yeah. Right. That's really what it's all about is you yep. want to be ready. How ready do you feel for this race? I mean, I, I think as ready as I've ever been. Okay. Um, so I think, you know, we feel in a really good spot of like, you know, we've done everything that we can up to this yes. point. And I'm sure we'll learn things from this race that we'll take to the next. But in terms of like really taking full advantage of everything that we've learned so far, I think we really check those boxes, which which is a, a huge boost of confidence. And while you've been, how long you've been here? I've been here for, uh, I guess, like eight or nine days now. Nice. Yeah. Getting to sleep in a little bit. Has that been yeah. good for you? Yeah. I well, bet you you're a little rest deprived. <laughs> yeah. No, I've, I've been really making sure to, to crush the sleep and been going to bed between 7 and 7.30 most nights and then wake up pretty much with the sun. So Good uh, for we, you. We've been, doing, we've been doing good with the sleep quality and consistency and everything like that. What would you be uh, – what I, what I love about the way you race here, like your first Ironman as a pro and – you didn't hesitate to try to go for the win, right? You're, yeah. you're, you're not one of those guys who's intimidated by this. So what, what are you expecting here or what are you hoping for here? 
I mean, I think as with every race, the, the hope is to do as well as I can and yeah. execute what I can execute. And um, really, like, ultimate, like, goal is to do as well here as possible, but also have uh, some sights on the Pro Series as well. Um, right. So, like, I can't necessarily, like, risk it all and then completely blow up, but I also really obviously want to have the best race that I can. And is then, so is your season end here or is it 70.3 Worlds and all sorts of no, other stuff? No, because I had the injury in May, yes. um, I, I'm going to 70.3 Worlds um, to get my fifth race for the Pro Series. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, and with this season going longer than ever, going into December, probably starting later was not a bad thing for you. No, it, it ended up being great. And um, I've kind of always been a person that I prefer some bigger gaps between my races yeah. because I... I like to feel that I've improved from race to race. Yes. And so having the longer season while like it's definitely, I think by the time December comes around, I'm going to be like, I need a break. I'm like <laughs> done with this. Um, I think it's been really good um, in terms of staying healthy and being able to develop and progress from race to race. I love that. Uh, what, what is for the fact that you had the swimming background, obviously that wasn't gonna be a problem. Was the, the, the bike, was that something you took to right away or was that a challenge? Um, I had kind of been on a bike since I was pretty young. Okay. So thankfully the bike handling skills and everything came. You had that. I already had that. And so it's really, I think really like my trajectory has been as great as it's been because it's really been more about just translating the, you know, metabolic engine and the aerobic capacity right. that I had from other sports into triathlon. And so for the most part, like it's, it's come pretty pretty well i think i love it matthew thank you so much for taking time yeah and have yourself a great race out there on saturday thank you so much really appreciate it poncho man take us out my friend and poncho man